Paul Bailoff, legendary vocalist for Exodus, made a monumental impact on the metal world through his work with the band. The group was instrumental in pioneering thrash metal, a style of music that blended the fury of hardcore and the razor-edged precision of such British bands as Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, and soon became the toast of the Bay Area metal scene, which also included Metallica, Testament, Violence, and Death Angel. The 1982 demo became hugely popular amongst the underground tape trading community. The band recorded the seminal thrash debut Bonded by Blood, which was released in 1985. Personal and musical differences led to Bailoff's dismissal before the release of the group's second disc, Pleasures of the Flesh. While Bailoff didn't perform on that record, he received writing credits on the songs Brain Dead, Pleasures of the Flesh, and Seeds of Hate. After leaving Exodus, the band continued to record and tour throughout the 80s and 90s. In the meantime, Bailoff formed the speed metal combo Piranha and also served a brief stint as the vocalist for Heathen, although he never recorded a full album with either band. Exodus broke up in 1992 after their fifth disc, Force of Habit. I don't know, it seems like a lot of people's friendships with Paul are really one-sided, but and a lot of the stuff Paul does, nobody could ever fucking get away with. But Paul is just sort of an enigma that way. He just draws people to him. a lot, but when I talk to all his friends and we tell the stories about the experiences that we had together, 
I don't miss him. I just feel like he's right there, and it just really makes me happy. And I think it always will. I think that's you know Paul's legacy for all of us is just all the fucking insane shit that he did over the years. And uh, he'll, you know, he's going to be a part of me for the rest of my life, and there's never going to be anyone like him again. <laughs> then, in 1997, ten years after Bailoff left Exodus, he rejoined his former bandmates for a sold-out reunion concert in San Francisco. That show was recorded and released as the live album Another Lesson in Violence in 1997, and a full worldwide tour followed. <laughs>
control the room the way Paul could. Fuck yeah! He had every single one of you guys right there in the palm of his hand. He could blow you off and he could suck you in. It was, it was up to him. And that's charisma. And Paul had charisma. Um, man, I don't got nothing good enough like all these guys. <laughs> but it's all here.
Paul was moving out and they was having a house wrecking party. And I'm like, I told all my buddies, this can't be true, but let's go out to Berkeley, you know, let's go out there and check this out. So, and you can, some of you guys there at this party, maybe? Yeah. Well, we walk in, Paul answers the door, he says, come on in, man, let's party. We had like about six, eight friends with us. And he says, we says, we heard this a house wrecking party. So says, sure, and start fucking shit up. But <laughs> everybody just started grabbing beers, throwing them through the windows, and he was just like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the one famous quote, I always remember Paul always saying, long when I first met him, let's kill posers, man. Let's kill posers. That was his favorite thing, man. It was his favorite thing. Look around all you people in here, man. You guys are a special breed of people here in the Bay Area. I know myself personally from uh, all supporting all the metal people coming together for the Thrash of the Titans we did. It's the same thing right here for Paul. I'm seeing faces I haven't seen in 20 years, man. People coming out when, it's, when you really need the support from people, man. Listen, you guys are great here in the Bay. I love the guy. I miss him greatly. 
I promised myself I'm not gonna fucking break down, but it's really hard. And uh, he's special, and I'll, a part of me has died with him, but I carry a part of him with me forever. Paul, I love you, baby. The group had recently booked seven West Coast shows for February and March and was working with Bailoff on demos for a new album when Paul suffered a major stroke. Bailoff, who had no previous major health problems, was left in a coma, and after being declared brain dead, his life support was shut off and he died at Highland General Hospital in Oakland, California. He was 41 years old. The entire metal community was shocked and saddened at the news of his passing. The metal world had truly lost one of its most outspoken and uncompromising characters, the voice of one of the genre's masterpieces, and someone who played and lived as his onstage demeanor indicated. There was no such thing as a stage persona with Paul. Those of us who enjoyed his music and saw him perform should consider ourselves fortunate and honored to have witnessed such a powerful force of nature as Paul Bailoff. Gone, sadly, but not forgotten. Paul loved Exodus and we loved him for it and in spite of it. His flame burned bright, so bright in fact that in hindsight it was all but impossible to have burned forever. Still, it burns in us and we must never let that flame burn out, thus Paul's legacy and his contribution be forgotten.